the remaining 25 um, uh, samples exhibited other mitochondrial DNA variations. The term haplotype is derived from a contraction of the phrase haploid genotype. So the genotype of, of one part of the complement of uh, the DNA. Um, but it, not all see it as, as that simple of a picture. G. Valiant and co-workers in 1994 proposed that as many as 10 possible mitochondrial DNA found haplotypes gave rise to uh, Native American populations. Four of those 10 would have been, uh, would have given rise to the four major haplogroups, A, B, C, and D, whereas the other six haplotypes would exist among the 3.4% of the population, not among the major haplogroups. In 1996, Torino and co-workers identified 10 haplogroups designated H, I, J, K, M, T, U, V, W, X among three European populations. So these were the ones that were identified in European groups. Haplogroup X was present in 4% of the population. Peter Foster and others in 1996 stated that they would call the major Native American uh, haplogroup, which was previously referred to as other, half of group X. And there was actually some question about whether these two were, were comparable, the X of uh, Native Americans versus the X of the Europeans. They proposed that this half of group was Siberian in origin. Michael Brown and others in 1998 stated that the X haplotype of the, of the Forster study was in fact the same as the X haplotype in the Torino European study. They stated our analysis confirmed that haplogroup X is present in both modern Native Americans and European populations. The Brown study also demonstrated that haplogroup X was clearly of ancient origin. However, uh, in other words, preceding Colombian contact in the Americas. Moreover, they stated overall these data exclude the possibility that the occurrence of haplogroup X in Native Americans is the result of recent European admixture and instead provide a rigorous demonstration that this haplogroup group represents an additional founding mitochondrial lineage in Native Americans. The antiquity of the haplogroup group X in the Americas was confirmed in 2002 when R.S. Uh, Mali and David Smith identified a 1,300-year-old person discovered along the Columbia River near uh, Vantage, Washington as belonging to haplogroup group X. Their finding confirms the hypothesis that haplogroup group X is a founding lineage. The implications are interesting, were interesting to say the least, an ancient European haplogroup in Native American populations. Brown and his colleagues asked the obvious question, where did this haplogroup originate? Thus far, haplogroup X has not been, and still continuing quote, thus far haplogroup X has uh, not been detected in numerous uh, Asian Siberian populations, end quote. They went on to say, quote, haplogroup X is remarkable in that it has not been found in Asians, including Siberians, suggesting that it may have come to the Americas via a Eurasian migration, end quote. The possibility that one of the five founding groups had ancient European connections was exciting and controversial. Even the popular press picked up on its implications. Some LDS scholars hoped that this was evidence of a long-awaited link to the Middle East, ignoring the fact that Brown and his associates proposed that hypotype X arrived in North America 20 to 30,000 years ago. The controversy was largely put to rest in 2001 when uh, Dorenko and his fellow researchers found half a group X in South Siberia, although in only 3.5% of the population, very rare. Half a group X accounted for 3% of the Native American population studied to date, added to the 96.6% percent it accounts for account for by haplogroups A, B, C, and D, that left only 0.4 percent of Native Americans so far studied unaccounted for. As expressed by Smith and his colleagues, most researchers believe that the origin of 99.6 percent of Native Americans are accounted for now by haplotypes A, B, C, D, and X. Uh, the limited data garnered from studies so far of human genetics in concert with archaeological and anthropological studies have largely confirmed the scientific 
hypothesis that Central and Northeast Asia is the primary source of the majority of the early inhabitants of the Americas. This conclusion has led to the establishment of a paradigm of American origins. There has been little, if any, evidence seriously considered by the mainstream scientific community that would indicate a Middle Eastern or any other source of origin of a significant number, uh, let alone the majority of the contemporary Native Americans. Although the, uh, the paradigm is beginning to uh, erode somewhat. So here's the existing paradigm. And some of you may have seen the, the Atlantic Monthly uh, issue that had the very interesting diffusionist uh, hypothesis presented on its cover. And the subtitle is, is quite uh, uh, telling of the reception that these notions uh, and uh, questionable uh, evidence have, been, have received. You've probably, you've probably heard of those crackpot theories, it says, about ancient visitors to North America. Guess what? And we, we, we can see now through the study of uh, Paleo-Americans, Paleo-Indians, and as the archaeological record begins to uh, uh, mount uh, martial evidence to show uh, various transoceanic contacts, and uh, John Sorensen's uh, bibliography uh, uh, enumerates many of these uh, at great length. So, where does this leave us? As, as we see it, there are, are several hypotheses that we can uh, work from at this point. First, all Native Americans are of Asian origin. And uh, uh, this has been the predominant hypothesis of mainstream science since the late 16th century. Or two, alternately, all Native Americans are of Middle Eastern origin. This hypothesis is that advocated by some people some people who accept the Book of Mormon, and some people who don't accept the Book of Mormon. Third, most Native Americans are of Asian origin, whereas some small subset is of Middle Eastern origin. This latter hypothesis has two subservient or, uh, hypotheses. First, that no genetic evidence of the Middle Eastern subset has been found, but may eventually be found with increased samples and more rigorous uh, analysis and examination, or that no genetic evidence of Middle Eastern uh, subset has been found and probably never will be found. And this is a position that we tend to, uh, to adopt. Hypothesis one and two are testable by direct scientific methods. The genetic constitution, the extent of Native American populations has been extensively studied, uh, acknowledging the limitations. The data support hypothesis number one and refute hypothesis number two. Hypothesis three is more problematic and may not be testable. Why? Because a very small population introduced to a larger population may or may not be identifiable based on whether any specific genetic markers for that population was transferred to the main population, persisted, fixed within that population. The X haplotype is an example of such a potential genetic marker. Because haplotype X has not been found, uh, had not, past tense, had not been found in Asian populations prior to 2001, it remained as a possible marker brought into the population from Europe or the Middle East. The discovery that haplotype X existed in South Siberia ended most inquiries into its source. The observation was consistent with hypothesis one. consistent with hypothesis one. The x haplotype, however, was present in only 3.5% of the South Siberian population, an area from which the other four haplotypes were not proposed to originate. Although the observation was consistent with this hypothesis, the prospect that Native American x haplotype was actually derived from the Siberian x haplotype and not from European x haplotypes has never been and probably never will be established. 